Now there's one interesting thing in here. You'll notice up here we have mute, and the next to that it says P. That P denotes whether the send, this section, is it pre-fader or post-fader, meaning right now it's post-fader. So if I grab my channel fader, my volume fader, and if I drag it down, it cuts off the sound. This is typically what you would use for most time-based effects. If you were setting up, say, a, um, a mix for uh, monitors, like headphone monitors or off, you know, if you're on stage or something, you'd want to use pre. So what pre allows you to do is to create your own custom submix that's going to that uh, specific output. So if I had four guys and I set up four auxes, uh, aux one, two, three, and four for each guy relative, each one of my sends sends A, B, C, and D, which are routed to aux one, two, three, and four, you have a, a channel fader. So you can go through and, you know, the guy's like, oh, I want to hear more drums in my mix. I want to hear more of me, more bass or more guitar in my mix. That's how you can create a customized mix for each individual. You can do it within Pro Tools if you're working in the studio. In this case, you can also use it as a special effect. You can say pre-fader. And as you can see, it got really loud. But I can take the, the dry out and just listen to the delay. So that's an interesting thing. I'm only using the first four taps anyways. So I'm using this. We'll bring this back up. 